Hi and welcome back. Okay, so I've had a delivery. So I've got 10 of these GPR PCBs. And as I've mentioned, we're uh, feeling the squeeze on only having two GPRs on the breadboard at the moment. So I think it's uh, more than appropriate time to expand ourselves up a bit with some real PCBs. Have got one of these uh, tip cleaners now. I've got some desolder braid as well. Let's hope we don't actually need that. This is interesting stuff. It's basically just copper wick to uh, to wick away solder. I also bought a little sample pack of the expensive, at least in the UK, leaded solder, which everyone seems to recommend, so I'll give that a try. When I was designing this one up, I put the resistors on the back to save a bit of space, so I think we should do those first. These are 0805 resistors which are smaller than anything I've ever soldered before. The same as before, I'm going to tin one of the pads. Okay, so this solder seems to stick up a bit. Okay, it's weird. Some of these uh, solder joints seem to have pulled away with the soldering iron as I took it away. I don't know what causes that. And that one's sticking up a bit.
Okay, they're not massively pretty, but I think they're good connections. Okay, I'm going to uh, secure these to the uh, turned pin connectors next. Times like this when I wonder why I didn't do the whole thing out of through hole components. Okay, so now it's time for the red LEDs. Now these have the little green T on the back and I can't for the life of me remember which way is ground. Now the ground pad on here is the one closest to us. It's the ground. Is the thin end. Far too much solder on the first couple of pads. Let's try this stuff out. Magic. Okay, this cheap microscope is absolutely terrible. If I put it at an angle. Okay, so this time we've actually got a nominated ground line marked up. So the LED should connect to these pins. Third one along doesn't work. Okay, it looks to be the same way round as the others. So then it's either the connections on the LED, the connections on the other side, or I've blown it. Connect ground via a resistor. Okay, so it's the resistor on the other side. Awesome. I know I've always said I was going to do my control lines in blue. I've actually decided to switch to green. The reason for that is not because there's anything wrong with picking blue for control lines, but because there's some other devices I'm interested in using elsewhere in the build, and I can get those in blue easier than I can in green. And consistent differentiation is all, all that really matters. Do we assume these are the same way around? I do you think that's a fairly safe assumption? 
the way I've, I'm holding this on a breadboard, I've got a ground line in the middle. These LEDs are wired the opposite way around, so they have the ground line towards the pin and the rest of the other end connects through the resistor back to the 5 volt line. So in theory if I connect power and ground up here they should all come on as it stands. Well, hey, I'm not completely incompetent. Now we're going to have to stick some uh, SMD chips on. Make sure you always align the little notch on there with the little notch on the chip. because you don't want to be the idiot who puts a chip on the wrong way around. Something I would, of course, never do. Now the other thing I learned on the first board I did was that the tiniest little bit of misalignment between the pins and the pads will hurt you later on when you're trying to uh, drag the solder connections. Okay, that is not taken to the pad for some reason. It is a little bit far over. Finally, I think that is my corner pins done right. If it's not clear what I'm doing here, I'm attempting to orient the picture on the screen with the uh, physical world. Is it me or did that just flow on the way it's supposed to for once? Let's see if we can repeat that. Now we need some uh, five four ones. I'm going to have to be very careful how I decant these because they do look incredibly similar to the latch chips. They don't have a notch, but they do have a little spot that lines up the spot on the board.
pain I had trying to get soldered back off last time. I think that's all the chips done, it's just the capacitors now. Firstly it's the big beefy 10 microfarad. If all my SMD joins look like that I'd be a happy man. We've got four chips and four decoupling cappers caps left to solder. These are back to 0805 size. I have always known as what was I thinking of selecting parts this small. In theory, that one is done. Now what I've got running here is a simple little sequence of instructions where I load one into A, one into B, one into C, which doesn't exist. And then I add B to A, C to B, and then A to C. And the end result of that is just A keeps counting because C doesn't exist. Firstly, we need the main bus. You can get that from pretty much anywhere, but that is going to line up nicely. We need LHS and RHS. VCC and around right load that's synonymous with these brown connections and that just needs to go into that one there Assert to main. That's equivalent to these white ones over here. That goes into the third one there. Okay, do we have a longer wire? Nope, I can bunny hop it over. To set to right hand side, which Guess it must be that one. Left hand side, a bit simpler. That one. So it's a load A. One so load B with one now load C with one. 
So this next instruction should be add b to a. So that means a is going to become 2 when we complete that. Of course, we're doing scalar operations here. So the next one is going to be add c to b. So b is also going to become 2 as long as that works. But then this one is going to be add a to c. So this one will add 2, so it should become 3. OK, so now we add a to b again, so that's going to become 4, that's correct. Ah, uh, that's fabulous. OK, so now we have three fully operational registers and I want more. I want to retire these um, breadboard incarnations. So I want three more of these done so we've got four fully working. I'm going to call it quits on this video for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.